ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಉತ್ತರಂ ಯತ್ ಸಮುದ್ರಸ್ಯ ಹಿಮಾದ್ರೇಶ್ಚೈವ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ವರ್ಷಂ ತದ್ ಭಾರತ ನಾಮ ಭಾರತೀಯತ್ರ ಸಂತತಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಸ್ಕಾಂದ ಪುರಾಣ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೇದಾರ ಖಂಡ ಅಂಡರ್ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಖಂಡ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ತಾರಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕುಮಾರಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಲೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಆರ್ಮೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೈತ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ದೇವಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಂಡ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವಾರ್ ಕುಮಾರಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಫೈನಲಿ ಕಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ತಾರಕ ಕಿಲಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ ದಾಸ್ ಎ ವಿಕ್ಟರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಟು ಕುಮಾರಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ದೇವತಾಸ್ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ವಿಕ್ಟೋರಿಯಸ್ ಡಿಫೀಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ದೈತ್ಯಾಸ್ At that point, Shaunaka asked, After killing Taraka in the battle, O Suta Brahmana, what great deed was done by the noble soul Kumara? It behoves you to describe everything. Kumara indeed is another Shambhu, the Lord Shiva, by whom everything is pervaded. Shambhu bestows the greatest position on being propitiated by penance but Kumara always yields immediate benefit unto man on being visited that that is only through his vision indeed those who have committed great sins those who are not religious at all even the chandalas who took dog's meat became rid of their sins on seeing lord kartikeya there is no doubt about this on hearing the words of shaunaka the exceedingly intelligent disciple of vyasa recounted the story of the noble minded kumara lomasha said in the battle kumara killed taraka who could not be vanquished and killed by devas o excellent brahmanas he gained the victory the greatness of kumara is narrated in all sacred texts in vedas and good agamas and the puranas so also in the upanishads and two systems of mimamsa kumara of such a nature o brahmanas cannot be descri- adequately described by mere sight he sanctifies the entire universe the king of mains that is yama heard about the savior of this world keeping brahma vishnu and vasava at the head he hurriedly came to shankara the benefactor of all the worlds the lord of southern quarter eulogized it's basically referring to yama he is the lord of the southern quarter he eulogized shankara with great self restraint and mental purity obeisance to lord bharga the refulgent god obeisance to the lord of devas to mrutyunjaya the conqueror of death to rudra to ishana the controller of the world to Kar- kapardi one with matted hair obeisance to the blue throated nilakantha sharva the destroyer of all to the lord having a form with sky as a limb obeisance to kala the lord of kala obeisance to the lord of in the form of kala on being eulogized by yama the word ishwar the lord ishwara said why have you come speak everything to us yama said may my words be heard o lord of devas a great expert in the use of the words only with a great penance o shankara you are propitiated and satisfied Brahma the grandfather of the world becomes gratified by great holy rites there is no doubt about it that he is the lord and the bestower of the boon always so also lord vishnu who can be comprehended only through the vedas and who is the external lord is highlighted by the yagnas force and other holy rites he granted kevala kevala bhava that means the salvation whereby one is liberated all men conform to my opinion my words cannot be otherwise when he is pleased he grants all worldly pleasures and all the and the riches of heaven etc on being bowed down and not otherwise the sun god grants health o shambhu 
the great god ganesha if we offer argya padya etc and sandal paste and repeat the mantras duly makes our task free from obstacles so also all the other guardians of the quarters best of benefits in accordance with their capacity o shankara they are pleased with yagna study of the vedas charitable gifts etc this was caused this has caused a great very great surprise to all the living beings here that the gateway to heaven has been opened wide by the vision of kumara o mahadeva even all the sinners have become heaven dwellers there is no doubt about it what should be done by me in the matter of deciding what should be done and what should not be done only those persons of meritorious deeds such as those who are habituated to speak the truth the quiescent ones liberal donors free and independent ones those who have conquered their sense organs non covetous one those who are devoid of lust and base attachments the performers of yagnas those who abide by righteous deeds and those who have mastered the vedas and the vedangas attained heaven o shambhu the goal attained by these meritorious persons is now attained by base men and chandalas by the mere vision of kumara of wonderfully miraculous activities o lord of devas on seeing the son of shiva in the month of kartika on the day of kartika constellation people attain the good goal along with crores of the numbers of their family avoiding my region by seeing kumara even chandalas attain good position immediately what shall i do on hearing the words of yama shankara spoke these words shankara said there are good emotions in the minds of the people of meritorious deeds whose sins have come to an end o dharma there is a great desire in them to go to the good holy spot or to visit good people this desire is caused by previous karmas it is only at the end of many births and rebirths that a feeling of devotion to me is generated in the minds of living beings o yama it is the result of many repeated experiences in the course of many births with the with all feelings hence all those in whom go good feelings of devotion arise are meritorious ones what has been the outcome of the repeated experiences of various births need not cause surprise women children shudras those who took lukuk dog's flesh that chandalas and base born fellows who are born among sinners or stay with them became pure persons o dharma due to the impressions of the previous births they attain white mind that means the purity of mind and through it they derive knowledge in all matters due to the previous actions and the working of fate all become suras and the guardians of quarters beginning with indra those groups of bhutas mean the beings of the goblins these sages and these deities are born in that manner even in the case of kumara you need not have any surprise in connection with the seeing of kumara o dharma raja know from me the following things words accompanied by actions yield fruits to everyone pilgrimage to all the holy spots yagnas and different kinds of charitable gifts all these should be performed for the sake of the purity of mind there is no doubt about it the atman is purified through the mind one must purify and redeem the atman through the atman i am the immanent soul established in all living beings i am stationed in the atman of all mobile and immobile beings perpetually i am in yogic communion with them mentally without anything in heaven i am speaking the truth unto you i am beyond all dwandvas that is mutually opposed pairs such as pleasure and pain etc 
I am devoid of doubtful alternatives. I am abiding directly in myself. I am eternal. I am in yogic communion perpetually. I am devoid of desire. I am immutable. I am ex excluded from the controversies of the different kalpas. I am infinite and can be comprehended by enlightenment. <coughs> All living beings are seen pursuing worldly existence because they have forgotten their Atman which is single and characterized by enlightenment. I, Brahma and Vishnu, we three are the causes of gunas, we are the causes of creation, sustenance and annihilation. It, it cannot be otherwise. We are all caused by the karma enveloped by ahankara, the egotism. You people, all the devas, human beings, the birds, etc., the beasts, etc., and many others have separate existence because you all possess these gunas. You are scattered in the ocean of worldly pleasure existence. You are fallen in a mirage and you are fascinated and subdued by Maya. We all, we, all the devas profess to be learned, scholarly and wise. We are all rogues engaged in false arguments. We blame and defame each other. Three gunas, the, those who have come and who come under the control of the three gunas, three gunas are Im immersed in the ocean of worldly existence. They are not aware of the reality. They are persons with deep attachments to worldly pleasures. They possess lust, anger, fear, hatred, pride, and rivalry. Not conversant with reality, they blame and defame one another. They are extroverts and do not see within themselves. Hence, one should understand all these as unreal being, being differentiated by gunas. They should, not, they should see the sole ultimate reality in that object which is beyond the gunas. Here that it is the greatest abode wherein difference, tom, difference transforms itself into identity, attachment, into absence of attachment and anger, into freedom from anger. <coughs> I mean, wherein the difference transforms itself into identity, attachment, into absence of attachment, anger, into freedom from anger. Sound does not eliminate it because it is kritaka, a product that which is caused like a ghata pot. Indeed, O Dharma, sound is evolved, created because it is directed towards the pravritti, the action. The place wherein natural opposite spares Dvandva such as pravritti and nivritti, that is manifestation and disappearance or activity and inactivity, merge is considered eternal. It has nothing intervening in between. It is devoid of gunas. It is gnapti, the pure knowledge alone. It is unsullied. It is free from aberrations. It is devoid of desires. It is pure existence. It is to be understood only through knowledge. It is self-established, self-luminous, refulgent and comprehensible through enlightenment. Those who are endowed with perfect knowledge speak of this as Gnana, the knowledge. They observe it in the form of their own self in everyone. After understanding it as something beyond all and comprehensible only through perfect knowledge, they establish themselves in their own self and impartiality. They go beyond the worldly existence which has no beginnings, which is caused by Maya and which cannot be deliberated on because of Maya. O King of the Dead Ones, after abandoning Maya, they attain the state of freedom from doubts. They are rid of the sense of minus and are devoid of attachment. 
the worldly existence has unreal fictitiousness or fancy kalpana as its root indeed kalpana mean the fictitiousness is comparable to untruth those by whom kalpana is eschewed attain the ultimate goal the notion of silver presumed in an oyster shell i mean assuming assumption of silver in an oyster shell the notion of the rope in a tra- serpent the notion of water in a mirage all these are definitely unreal not otherwise siddhi the spiritual attainment is the ability to act as one desires the unreal thing is dependence one who is bound is called parat paratantra dependent on another one who is liberated has a sense of freedom whence can be bondage to those who having realized that soul is one have eschewed the sense of minus and have no external res- restraints the bondage is fictitious and non existent like the sky flower or the horn of a rabbit so the worldly existence is unreal of what avail is much talk of what avail is a fruitless blabbing those who are desirous of attaining the greatest region avoid mamata feeling of minus or position they are the wise ones the learned ones they are devoid of attachment and have conquered their sense organs those who have cast off mamata those who have eschewed covetousness and anger attain the greatest region as they are devoid of love and anger as long as lust and greed attachment and hatred persist they do not attain spiritual beatitude they will know only the words of the scriptures yama said words came from the sound but knowledge is devoid of the word or the sound how then was it said by you o lord that word is non eternal the greatest brahman is akshara the imperishable word is the nature of akshara the syllable hence it is heard that word is mentioned by you as nirikshaka nirishaka nirikshaka that which was which observes whatever has to be explained can be explained only through words how can it be explained without words let all these be recounted o shambhu in the matter of deciding what should be done and what should not be done shankara then explained listen attentively to the truthful words of the great meaning by hearing this nothing should be known rem- nothing should be known remains that that means remains to be unknown all the sages expound knowledge they are devoid of sins they repeatedly practice knowledge those who are conversant with knowledge know what is knowledge it is only after knowing the three things namely knowledge object of the knowledge and that which is comprehended and attained that it can be described how and by whom it should be known and what it is what is it that was intended to be spoken i shall explain these things secondly understand it from me the only and single one that is brahmana appears to be many in the light of difference just as the ground viewed from the brahma brahmarika brahmarika as the ground is viewed from brahmarika the merry go round appears to be whirling o yama so also the atman appears to be many due to the idea of difference sen hence after critically examining it it should be known through shravana listening attentively it should be meditated upon through close application of the process of manana deliberation in particular after comprehending the atman one can easily be released from bondage this entire universe consisting of mobile and immobile beings is a network of magical delusion 
this great existence worldly this great extensive worldly existence is full of maya characterized by mamata the sense of minus after driving out mamata one is liberated from the bondage easily who am i who are you when or the where are the others all these are based on the great maya just like the fleshly fleshy protuberance protuberance from the neck of a goat the entire world is worthless and aimless all this is fruitless and devoid of permanent appearance it is showy mass of smoke without any essence hence with all effort remember the atman o yama lomasha then said directed thus by shambhu the king of the dead ones became enlightened himself and realized the atman he became famous as the dispenser absorbed in dispersing dispensing the fruits of karma of all men and living beings sages inquired it may be described that highly wonderful feat was accomplished by the noble soul kumara after killing taraka in the battle Suta then replied when the da- daitya taraka was killed mountains the chief of whom was himavan approached there and eulogized kartikeya with sweet words the mountains prayed him obeisance to the lord of auspicious form we salute you the cause of auspiciousness unto the universe hail to you o kinsman of the universe obeisance to you the sanctifier of the universe the bow down to you by whom merely through your sight chandalas have been made excellent ones we seek refuge in you the soul kinsman of the universe hail to you o son of parvati obeisance to you o son of shankara obeisance to you o son of kritikas obeisance to you who are born of the fire god obeisance to you o lord worthy of being worshiped very well by the excellent devas obeisance to you o lord the most excellent one among the possessors of perfect knowledge obis obeisance to you o most excellent one among devas be pleased o lord worthy of being sought refuge in and competent to destroy all agonies o lord on being praised thus by mountains kartikeya the son of uma was pleased in his mind and became eager to grant them a boon kartikeya then said o excellent mountains listen to my words now you will be served or resorted to by both karmans that is those who are devoted to holy rites as well as the gnanis those who are devoted to the path of knowledge stones served with great efforts are found only in you at any in- at my instance let them purify the universe there is no doubt about it all mountain regions will become holy spots and not otherwise they will become divine temples of shiva and other holy shrines there is no doubt that at my instance they will become splendid and grand pilgrim spots of various forms this excellent mountain himavan who is my maternal my grandfather and is highly fortunate will be the bestower of fruits on ascetics meru the lord of mountains will be the support of all the excellent mountain loka loka and the mountain of the rising sun of great fame will become the lord himself in the form of a linga and not otherwise the following mountains will be the destroyer of sins shri shaila mahendra sakhyachala malayavan malaya malyavan malaya vindhya gandhamadana shweta shetakrita trikuta and mountain durdara these and many other mountains are embodiments of linga at my instance there will become these will become the destroyer of sins thus the son of shankara granted boons to those mountains then nandi spoke to the lord honored by all the agamas 
Nandis then said, O Lord, the mountains have been made embodiments of Linga by you. How should the shrines of Shiva be worshipped by all the Devas? Kumara then said, Linga should be known as the shrine of Shiva, the trident bearing Lord of Devas. It should be worshipped by all human beings and Devas beginning with Brahma diligently without any lethargy. Lingas made of sapphire, pearls, coral, lapis lazuli, lunar stone, gomedha, ruby, emeralds, gold, silver, copper, brass and zinc. Lingas made of precious stones and metal have been described to you. Only the pure ones should be worshipped. They are the bestowers of all desired objects. Among all these that are made in Kashmira is the most excellent one. It, it gives all pleasures of this world and the next one to be devotee, next one to the devotee who worships. Nandi then said, How is it that you have told that Banalinga is the most excellent and worthy of being worshipped? Explain everything, O Lord of Holy Rites. Then Kumara replied, The stones that are seen in the waters in the middle of the river Reva, also known as Narmada, shall be in the form of Linga by the favor of Shiva and not otherwise. Their roots should be made smooth and placed over the Pindika, the pedestal, also known as Panipita. They should be scrupulously worshipped by one who was who has the intention called Shivadiksha. One shall worship Shiva joined to the Pindi in accordance with the injunctions of the scriptures. The Lord of the universe should be best should bestow boons on worshipper, not otherwise. The five-lettered mantra should always be in the mouth of the worshipper. The mind should be directed towards the contemplation on Shiva. He must have impartiality towards all living beings. He should be dumb in giving expression to slander. He should be an impotent fellow in regard to other men's wives. Thus ended chapter 31 of Kedara Khanda under Maheshwara Khanda in Skanda Purana. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmira Puravasini Tvamaham Prarthaye Nityam Vidyadanancha Dehime Goodbye